Right. Hi guys, and welcome back to another video on Plan Swift. Right, so today we're gonna be talking about slab uh, takeoff. Right, it can be used for concrete, it can be used for steel and whatnot. Right, so the pointers discussed today uh, will apply to just about any type of uh, measurement. Just that for today's example, we will be working on uh, concrete slabs. Right, so I have here a simple uh, sample drawing here. So what we'll usually start off is that we can start off by saying an area. And you notice that whenever I click uh, this area, this color here is always randomized. Right, because it's by default in the back end, it is randomized. Right, so whenever I click a new one, highly likely it will be a different color all the time. Right, so we'll talk about that later. Right, so you can have two items. So let's say when I start here, and I can just place here 225 and then take um, slab. So I can say start. So I have two, two record modes. So at the bottom right now, you see it's record mode box. So currently it shows box. If I change to point to point, I can say one, two, three, four, right click, stop. Right, so I can have something like that. This is, that is one example. So if I were to continue, I can just click on the green button, continue. And right now it is in red color. So red color means that I am ongoing. There's something ongoing. And if I switch it to box mode, right, box mode allows you to just drag and finish, drag and finish. So you can repeat, repeat over again. So now the difference between these two, it really depends. Uh, if you have square or rectangular areas, then by all means, please use the box uh, measurement method. It is uh, much faster. Right, so whatever that you will measure here, this 47 here, so it will show you right now, this is uh, 21, and then there's another amount here, 25. So that is the total. So individually, when you hover over, you will be able to see area, linear total, point count. Right, I can also choose to show the label, so I can show you the info that I have here. So these are some basic uh, display options. Now, if you go over to the estimating tab in the middle, right, you also notice that the item shows here. Now, this table uh, it is uh, a default setting, so it will show you uh, different sorts of info. Right? So, by default, it has these few columns, right? However, you have the option of adding in additional items, right? So, let's take a look. So, when whenever you double click on any uh, item, any measurement in Blendsweep. Right, this form view is a short, just a shortcut view. Right, if you check under the advanced view, you'll be able to see one whole list of different variables. Right, we are not talking about custom variables, but we are talking about variables that PlanSwift has provided for you. So if you scroll down to the bottom, you will see something called takeoff data. All right, so we will be using one of them. And you see, I can actually see that, hey, I actually have depth here. So that's something that uh, plan swift has I also have volume right so there are some inbuilt formulas already right so let's take a let's let's uh, make use of them first right so let's press cancel now so right now you see that the two columns uh, namely depth and volume do not appear here right so if I go to uh, the columns I have the option of adding additional right so I can click on add right so what you do here you just have to follow the naming Right, so as long as you follow the name correctly, then the item will show. Right, so depth is the exact spelling, uh, following the caps and all. So I can say, okay, uh, the data type. Right, so depth is a number, so I'll say number. Right, so from here you can decide whether do you want to show the units or not. So yes, I will show as well. Right, so I have my depth. Okay, then I'll add one more and I say volume. Right, so you notice as I write down all these items and I select they are being shown here, depth, units, volume. So for, for this example, I'll just turn off the units for both. I have these two, depth and volume. So once that is done, right now it is zero. My depth is zero. So that's why my volume is zero as well. So I can double click here and I can change my depth. So for example, I can have my depth. So let's say, for example, if the depth is going to be maybe 0 0.225. Right, if I click OK, I will have an amount here and I have a volume here. Right? You can choose to uh, you can choose to actually uh, show the units if you wish to, but this is one way you can uh, gather up all the resources in this estimating tab. Right. 
The other method, which is uh, you can call it level two, right, is for you to actually create a uh, item. That means create a um, template, right? Because whatever that I just did, I have to type in all these details all the time, right? My depth, my volume. So something that you can do if you measure similar items very often, you can come over to your templates and create a new item. So I can actually create a new item altogether. So let's say, for example, 225mm thick um, slab, for example, I can keep the same name, no issue. So I can put a bracket here, concrete. Now you see here, it says here it's a random color. So it's time for you to select a color that you prefer. So let's say I say orange. Right, so next I can go to the advanced. And now I'm going to do a few things, right? So I'm going to toggle between the advanced view and also the form view. So under depth, right, I will click on this little box here. All right, so if I click on this little box, right, and I switch over to the form view, you notice that it appears over here. So it has transferred to the form. So when it transfers to the form, it means that I will be able to input data in it later on. All right, okay, so uh, before we go anything more, I'll go back to advanced. And now I want my uh, I want to show the units, right? Because sometimes when my depth comes in, uh, I may be confused whether I should put in 225 or whether I should put in 0 0.225, right? So these are some things that are prone to mistake. So I will click on this button here called Form Layout, right? So you are actually customizing the form, uh, whether you want certain things to display higher or lower, uh, whether you, whether you want to hide certain things, that's up to you. Right, so for that, it's over here. Uh, the location is fine. So I will say I want it to be show units. So it will show me very clearly what units I am using, meters. Right, so that's enough, go back. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want my quantity to reflect as my, uh, I want my quantity to reflect as a volume. Right, because my base measurement is an area. Right, so what I can do here, so when it says here quantity is take off, this means that whatever that you measure. Right, so for example, I can change this, so I can click on this button here, and uh, the formula, edit, uh, formula editor, so simply I can actually just uh, say here, change this to volume, right, so I can change this to volume, just make sure the formula is correct, so I'm actually taking data from this item, right, so I'm taking data from this item, so it will actually automatically have the area multiplied by the depth, which is in my form, and give me my volume, so that will form the base quantity. So once I change this to volume, I can actually click on the drop down menu and change this to cubic meters. Right, so once that is done, my standard item has been finished, so I can go back to my drawing. Right, so once I'm back here, I will not start my measurement from this anymore because this is a default nameless item. Right, so instead I will be over here on my right under templates where my item is here. So I can click on it to start and you see here that the depth is shown. So I can say at this point 0 0.225 and I can start. Alright, so make sure your record mode is box. So I'll just drag, measure, drag, measure as I go along. Right, so at this point, when you show label, right, it shows here square meters, but when you switch over to the estimating tab, right, so it shows you in cubic meters. Right, so of course I can have a separate column that shows me the area if I want to, if I want to find out the flat area, so I can open up another column and just put in area, the text that will be a number, so when I close this, my area will still show. Right, it still shows 53.41, but it displays in cubic meters. Right, so I hope uh, you have uh, learned a few more things from this. If there's any questions, please do let me know. Right, thank you.